Hello everyone, I'm super excited because I'm in Los Angeles today and I got invited by Riot Headquarters. I'm actually just in front of it, here. This is the Riot Headquarters. 2,500 people are sitting there working every single day. And it's like a small village, it's quite insane. But, you know, I'm excited not because I'm here just to check out the, the headquarters. I'm here because I got invited to have a sneak peek a new game that Riot is developing right now. It's called TFT, and it's an auto battler. So it's kind of like auto chess, you know? But with League of Legends branding and IP, and of course, you know, something unique in it. I'm 100% sure. So I, I, I literally cannot wait to see the game and see how, you know, how, what's the Riot's take on that genre. It's actually quite cool that, you know, when you think about G2 Esports, you think about the League of Legends team, right? And they're actually playing, you know, in the LEC uh, season, I think, in a few hours or something like that. And uh, it's quite cool to see that there's a, there will be a second game that will be in the same universe as League of Legends. And, you know, as, as a G2 brand representative, I feel obliged to, to be hyped about it, but I'm really hyped about it. I love the auto chess genre. And I think this is something that might be, you know, like a new beginning for a competitive game. I hope so at least and uh, pretty hyped to see it. But th this is the lobby here uh, at Riot Headquarters. You can actually see, look at that. There's a lot of, uh, you know, different artwork here. Some stuff being played. You have, uh, actually someone is playing here right now. Good luck and have fun. So that's the second part of the lobby. When I think about League of Legends, it's something that I every single time have in front of my eyes. It's Anna and her bear T-Bears. When I started playing League of Legends in like, what was it, 2010 or something like that? Anna was my main character. Uh, later on it was Zix and then Zack. But anyway, I, I was playing a lot with Anne and, you know, it's quite cool to see it like in real life size. It's quite frightening. Anyway, that's uh, it's actually quite cool. It has so much detail when you think about it. Look at that. It's insane. It actually looks like from a movie. And he's probably not going to the dentist, at least um, judging by the state of his teeth. Anyway, we're gonna go a little bit further. Uh, Tabers is behind me right now. So we're gonna go into an area where we have some meeting rooms. Uh, there's also a cafeteria. Uh, you know, since there's so many people here working every single day, this is this is a campus basically. It's uh, you have everything that you need to function as a human being basically. You know, you work, you eat, you drink here. You have also some uh, free activities like that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of show you around what there's here. The cafeteria on the left. It's very open space. You know. It's quite cool that you can work in, a, in an environment like that. I think it promotes creativity. You just feel le less like a uh, corporation or something, right? It's super big, but uh, here they have their own Starbucks, I would say. It's a uh, Bilge Water Brew, that's how it's called. It's pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh, so now we enter a different building. There's actually eight buildings um, here in the campus of Riot. And this building is called Tech Bar. I think so, at least. Uh, so basically it's like whenever you have a problem with your PC or your laptop, whatever, you come here and get it fixed. But at the same time, the second part of this building is even more interesting for all the gamers. So let's, let's take a look. This is the part where you can actually play games. This is, this is the room when you can play a fully fledged uh, team based game. So it's like Challenger Red and Challenger Blue. And you, you know, you, you can even see the progress of the game on those two screens above. So it's like a, like a small esports camp here. Uh, you have all the PCs in the middle where you can just play any game. Doesn't have to be League of Legends. That's why I got told, by the way. People might even play other MOBAs. Wow. Anyway, here we have Lucian, a big statue. Pretty neat. It's pretty dark. I I'm sorry, I'm not an expert when it comes to like making videos. So I have no clue how to make this brighter. But uh, you have to believe me. There's so much detail into this. It's quite insane. This guy actually has a hole blown out into his head. Wait, give me a second. See? Uh, now let's take a look on the rest of this building. So all those PCs here, prepared to play any game. You have some... Oh, you can see World of Warcraft here. World of Warcraft, League of Legends. Uh, 
some ads being played. Now, next room is just arcade. You know, we have some Dance Dance Revolution, but with League of Legends branding and some music from League of Legends, which is pretty cool. I think they modded it themselves. So it's not like an official release or something, it's just something that they did. Uh, you can play Mundo's Operation. Interesting. You have uh, some Billard, Snooker. No, it's not Snooker, it's Billard. And then you have some old CUTs because I know that there are a lot of fans of uh, Smash Bros. Melee here uh, preparing for EVO and so on. It's pretty cool to see, like, you know, all this gamer culture being, like, crammed into one place. But my personal favorite personal favorite is this this is insane always wanted to have one of those in my home you know really always wanted to have one so hey right hey right give me one give me one anyway so we have the defender pretty classic simpsons i actually never played this one but it's also a classic uh then we have dungeons and dragons shadows over mistara uh, then we have, I actually don't know this one, kind of looks like Lotus, but it's not, Crescent Word, okay, uh, then we have the same, then we have Teenage Mutant Nin Ninja Turtles, and we have X-Men, and then we have a absolute classic, Time Crisis 2, wow, you know what, uh, I might just take a break, I'll be right back, see ya, uh, um, you know what? I'm gonna cut it short because we're gonna play TFT in a few minutes. So I'm gonna just run away, play, and then come back and give you some impressions, okay? I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. So hey, teleportation? Nah, not really. But I'm home and I'm recording another video and you, you may ask why, right? Because I had my first impression video from LA, directly from there. Uh, but it turns out I can talk way more in depth about the game itself so I just scratched that other video because it it wouldn't be as interesting as what I have to say right now. So I'm super hyped about the game. Teamfight Tactics is gonna be, I hope, absolutely amazing. You know, it was still very early in the development, uh, but I loved it. I loved every single minute of um, of the time we had there to play it. And everyone, instead of just doing feedback, just wanted to play more. Uh, so let me briefly talk about what is the game about, since not everyone played auto battlers in, in his life. So primarily, of course, auto chess. Uh, basically, it's a it's an eight player game where every single player buys champions from the game uh, that build his board, builds his board, and he sends those units to battle all the players. Uh, the the last man standing actually just wins the game. You, buy, you get gold for which you buy the champions, you get experience for you get more champions on the board, and you get items. That's a, and you play against players and a play against environment. So every other round, um, from time to time, you play against neutral creatures. That's the very quick TLDR about the game. It sounds very simple, but it's actually very complicated. Now, what is going on with teamfight tactics and why I'm so hyped about it? So Riot to took that formula and created something more, you know? And it it's absolutely phenomenal for me. A few of the features of Teamfight Tactics that we're going to get uh, in the finished product. Bear in mind, everything that I'm going to tell you, everything, is a, uh, let's say, very early, I would say even alpha, so there's, there, there might be a lot of changes, including very heavy changes to the gameplay. But this is why I, ha why I had the experience to play. Basically, the field, unlike in auto chess, where it's basically a board, you know, a board game of chess. So you have four rows for each player with uh, eight pools. Here, and it's, it's all squares, right? In Teamfight Tactics, you actually have a hexagonal board. So it's completely different. The the start alone is completely different. It changes the way uh, creatures are attacking and changes the way how many creatures can attack one creature. Uh, the movement is different. Everything is different. And that's amazing already because it uh, it changes the way you're going to think about fights uh, in teamfight tactics. 
Uh, basically, you have also a bench where you have the creatures that you're not using on the board. There's a shop, of course, where you have five creatures every single turn that you can buy. Uh, they ra they're ranking from one tier one to tier five, so each more powerful. Uh, and you can combine them by buying three copies of the same champion to create a higher level champion. So three tier ones of the same name create a tier, um, basically a higher tier of that creature. And then you have three of uh, an upgraded creature you create one super upgraded creature and it you know and it destroys the entire board now, i'm joking but you know a tier level three of a, like a tier five it's absolutely insane anyway so that's one thing you buy champions you can re-roll just like an outer chest you can buy experience uh by by spending gold which is exactly the same uh, you get also get you also get gold for win streak, lose streaks, um, for interest, and winning each round. Uh, and of course, you can sell champions as well. Then, when it comes to something that is really different from auto chess, is the let's call it carousel. So when you start the game, and I can't remember how many how many rounds like is, is how, by how many rounds is this a recurring thing, but starting the game you do something like a draft. So basically, each player has his own small character, is teleported to a, to a different scene where eight champions uh, with an item are standing just there and waiting to be grabbed. So every single player has to like just realize which character they want to play, and that's their character for the first round. So, and that... That format is being reused every, I think, I, 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 do not shoot me, but I think it's every 10th round, you have another round of a carousel, and it's basically like a catch-up mechanism, because you again have eight creatures there, uh, with an item inside of them that you can pick from, but the, the player with the lowest health at that current time picks a creature first. And then the next one, then the next one, then the next one. So basically, if someone is in theory doing worse, he can catch up a little bit by picking one of the eight champions that either A, fits his um, strategy when it comes to the champions, or something that he's lacking to upgrade a champion. Uh, B, he can pick a champion because of his item, because it, he lacks that item for a specific combination. Or C, he can pick up a character that he wants to sell because he needs gold. So you pick out the one that is more, m most expensive, which creates another, another layer of strategy when it comes to the um, just playing the game, which is amazing. And also it's a lot of interaction with other players, which is also great, especially if you, uh, you're, you're in, a, in, a, in a call with them uh, and you just talk to each other. It's kind of like, it's like a party game, you know? It's great. I love that, love that part of the game. So now... When it comes to the champions, obviously, obviously all of them are from League of Legends. So you're going to know a lot of them. You're going to see Gangplank, you're going to see Misfortune, you're going to see uh, Mordekaiser, you're going to see who else was there, Vayne. Um, I mean, a, a lot. I'm not sure, 40, 50? There was a lot of them. And uh, don't, I'm not a LOL expert, don't ask me about skins. Uh, but basically... They're being represented by their origin uh, and by their class. So basically, the origins are demon, dragon, exile, glacier, robot, imperial, normal, ninja, pirate, uh, phantom, wild, void, and yordle. A lot of them, right? That's a lot. And then you have classes. Assassin, blade master, brawler, elementalist, guardian, gunslinger, knight, ranger, shapeshifter, and sorcerer. So there's a lot of um, a lot of complexity already here, because it seems like there's way more options to choose from uh, than in Outer Chess, and a lot of them are very different than what I have seen uh, in the other game. So, an example, Robot is a origin that is being represented currently only by Blitzcrank, and allows that creature to start with his mana full, so he can already use his ultimate in the beginning of the game. He's a great initiator, because he grabs a unit 
uh, towards himself. And that's his ultimate, not the silence one. So creatures, uh, I mean, champions are taken from League of Legends, but they might have a little, you know, the, the, the skills might be the same, but not exactly in the same slot, like with Blitzcrank. Uh, then we have an example, Phantom, a very powerful origin. So if you have two Phantoms, uh, you will change HP of one opposing champion to 100. He can have, I don't know, 2.5k health, but he's going to get hit by a Phantom, and he's suddenly at 100 HP. And uh, one, of the, one of the Phantom champions was Mordekaiser. That's, a, that's what I remember, 100%. Then we have an example, Ninja, which has a bonus to the damage if he's exactly alone, and no other ninja is on your side of the board, or all of them have the additional damage if you have four ninjas on the board. Um, then we have an example, Glacial, which uh, allowed you to freeze units of your opponent that you're attacking, of course, by chance. Uh, then we had Demon, which... Um, if I remember correctly, was burning mana of your opponent and dealing damage at the same time. Uh, then we had, uh, oh my god, I can't remember all of them, it's so much. Wild has, uh, had, uh, attack stacks, so they attack faster. Uh, Void was removing armor from your opponents. Yordles has, had evasion, uh, so basically there's a chance your opponent will miss on their auto attack. And uh, there's still a lot of that I didn't talk about. Oh, right, Pirate. Pirate was actually fantastic because that was completely new, a completely new mechanic. Uh, if you had three Pirates at the end of a round against another player, you get gold at the end of it. And it was a random gold between, I think, one to three or something like that. It was pretty great catch-up mechanic um, because from at least my very limited experience with Pirates, uh, the pirates themselves were not as powerful as other classes, but you make up by the gold, basically. Uh, then when it comes to classes, uh, we had, an example, Brawler, which the more Brawlers you had, uh, the more HP they had. Uh, Elementalist was um, summoning a creature at the beginning of the battle, uh, just like that, you know? Um, then we had Gunslinger, which have which which had the ability to attack more than more than once with their auto attack. Uh, knights had reduction uh, of damage from basic auto attacks. Rangers, oh my, I actually can't remember, but it was something with shooting their bow. <laughs> basically, shapeshifters uh, had more health when they were changing their shapes, like an example, Nidali uh, or Shivana. And I think they had additional bonus to damage. Sorcerer had more AP. Uh, assassins, I think there was a chance of higher chance on critica criticals. Blade Masters, oh my, can't remember. There was also Guardian. Guardian was great. Guardian was was great because a unit with Guardian, uh, and I think you need, I think you needed two or four. Uh, gave a bonus to armor to every single unit that was around them. So that already changed like the way you build your formations on the board because, you know, you're just gonna give probably more units uh, the bonus if you would like, right? So that's one thing. Uh, yeah, I, I, I can't remember every single one of them. I'm sure that they're gonna be changed as well uh, when you will be able to play the game uh, but from my very limited experience with the game uh, for the day and a half is that there's a lot of options when it comes to building your strategy and there's a lot of playstyle dependency on the, on, on the player. So you can express yourself by building specific, by specific strategies and it's also great because there's different different system um, for items which is very much connected uh, to the classes, right, and to the characters itself, because as you probably not remember, but what I talk about the carousel is when you pick a character, he has a an item in it already. So the access to the items is guaranteed to some degree, right? And there's also a chance that you're gonna get items from the PVE rounds uh, in the game. 
but it the combining the combination of the items is of is as well different than in outer chess first of all if you're a lol fan you're gonna love it because there's a lot of just items you know from the game they might have a little bit different effects uh but but they are all there and there's a lot of them and you know what what i love the most is the fact that you just need two items to combine them so they do something you know so you don't need like a um you don't have useless items that's that's great like an example now to chess you get five cloaks and you are like well whatever I, I guess i wear five of them so i'm not cold on this ice map you know uh in in tft every single item is worth something because you can combine it with just one other item and you get something and every item creates something with another item it's not like you have just some one item that you have to get a specific other item to get anything you can combine it with any other item that you have in game to get something new which makes them all useful and they can change your strategy and you can plan ahead as well because of the carousel because you will be going to be an example aiming for a specific item that you need for your other item that you already have to give something to your an example ad carry right so uh there were there was uh, a lot of items that were actually very powerful after combinations um there was also um I mean, i'm not sure if i can talk about it but i'll i will say one thing there were items of course which which uh give you like additional damage additional um attack speed basic stuff right there were items like um like which 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 worked like kind of like the guardian ability so they were giving uh buffs to creatures around you um from your own strategy of course from your own side of the board and uh what else uh there was an example an item that allowed you to have more creatures on board than you're actually allowed by your level uh and there was an item few of them actually uh that allowed you to add additional uh class i think i think that was class to your character so you could create a new synergy by creating an item that allowed your an example let's say knight to be an assassin in addition to his normal class which creates a whole new world of synergies you know and that's fantastic i hope i didn't break an nda right now i really do <laughs> because if i did i'm gonna get chopped in pieces anyway so that's basically it uh when it comes to the items but i, I left i think the most exciting thing for um for the end so when you play out to chess you have eight players and each each uh each fight they play against another player that is being kind of like cloned against them right because each player has a fight of his own against a board of his opponent random opponent from from the game but at the same time you don't exactly see the same outcome right because you're playing against his clone not actually him now what tft does is that you get or your opponent gets teleported to your board or you're to his and you literally he see his board his graphics um his avatar and so on uh and his units or he comes to your board and you're like it's like home and away you know and in this case you share the experience of the battle which is super important because you get a lot of informations from those games and that allows you to create a specific strategy going forward because you don't miss on time to scout out what your opponent experience from the games is from the from the battles uh battles is and you get like immediate feedback of even maybe your opponent's actions because you exactly see what he's doing with his uh strategy because it's literally just right there on your board um and you know you cannot you cannot discard the social aspect of this as well because if you're playing with your friends and you're all sitting in a in a call or just use the in in game um in game communication devices you can talk to them about the outcome of the outcome of the fight that you currently have 
which is great. Because ima let's imagine I play against seven of my subs on Twitch or, or, or just, you know, my friends. And I play against player A and player A plays against me directly. And we can be excited about that fight because we exactly see the same thing. Not like in auto chess where we both fight. We might fight against each other, but we watch our own board and they can have different outcomes. Absolutely phenomenal. Can't wait because that creates a whole new level of interaction between players. With something, something that was very lacking so far. And I'm very happy that Riot recognized that and made that as a feature. So yeah, I think that's it. I think that's it. I, I think... Uh, I hope I didn't break any NDAs, uh, um, but uh, I'm super happy about this about this game, you know? Um, the level of, of complexity is a little bit intimidating for a competitive player that wants to be min-maxing, uh, but at the same time, there's something that I love and loved in card games, because there's the, 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 the variation of the game is different every single time. You need to improvise a lot. So there's the drafting experience. There's a lot of social interaction, just like in, in board games and card games and so on. And there's, you know, there's a little chance, there's a little luck needed, but you can minimize the amount of luck that you need to win the game by just playing correctly and anticipating what can happen in the future, planning out, going for economy, going for items, going for specific champions. There's so many things you can do, you know? And also what I'm very happy about is that the game doesn't require you to buy anything, basically. It's just a product that you play, and the only thing that you will buy is most likely uh, cosmetics. So yeah. I mean, I hope you guys will enjoy it. I loved absolutely every single second out of it, and uh, can't wait to stream it, or just to show more gameplay of it. More show you some gameplay of it uh because so far only few people in the world played it and uh i think at least from the room that i was in everyone loved it you know so see you soon